the pallets I'm using are made of a hard oak wood. They were used to ship generators to locations in California where we have multiple power safety shutoffs in high wind events and generators are in high demand so these pallets are plentiful right now. Here I'm shaving off the end of the 4x4 supports on the pallets. The space between posts was just a little narrower than I had anticipated, so I needed to shave it off to make it fit. I was putting it in place and realized that the middle support didn't align with the lower two pallets and had to flip it real quick. Little adjustments all along the way helped keep it a little more straight, a little more in line. But working with recycled materials like this requires an allowance to a little less precision than you would if you were using fresh wood from the lumber store. A couple of years ago we had replaced our field wire fence out on the street front. In the end we had a lot of posts. I used these for the main supports, drilled them into the ground, and where the posts weren't tall enough I bridged them using the pallets. Everything I've used so far has been recycled materials, aside from the fasteners, of course. The pressure-treated lumber I'm using for the top plates and for that bottom rim joist came from a deck that was demoed. The pressure-treated wood was still in perfectly good condition. The homeowner just chose to upgrade the deck with different materials and I was the happy recipient of this lumber that otherwise would have gone to the landfill. The screws I'm using here are a Fasten Master headlock screw with an extra wide shank and an extra wide head that holds the two members together securely. Because of the length and width of the shank, I have to pre-drill the holes in order to keep from wearing out the motor on my drill driver. One of the challenges working with the round post is trying to get an accurate measurement between posts. So here you see me using the square to get a good gauge of the distance between posts. The distance for the pallet is thinner than before and I won't be shaving off the 4x4 but cutting in the thinner cross members of the pallet. This means I can't cut on the table saw easily because those thin members would pinch as I try to push the pallet through the table saw. So instead I cut these off with a handsaw.
The downside to using these pallets is the way they're connected. They're made to hold up to the stresses of holding a heavy weight on top. And they've been fastened with a twisted nail that does not pull easily. So in most cases when I can't pull it, I just pound it back into the wood a little further. And by the same token, you see me pounding these um, strips of wood off rather than trying to pry them directly because, again, it is very difficult to make these uh, fasteners come out of the wood. And here you're going to see that I'm going to leave that loose and you'll see why in a moment. If I had tried to fasten that end support, it would have been hard to pound it in between the posts. And then the other drawback would have been the fact that the post is a little uneven to the pallet and I wouldn't have a good tight fit in the end. But by leaving it loose, I'll be able to fasten it first to the post and then refasten the pallet to the and support so that everything comes together nice and tight as you see. Here you can see as I put the pallet into place the horizontal strips overlap the post a little bit and that would have been almost impossible to fit that pallet in on the first cut if I had fastened the end support first. So again, a slight benefit to leaving it loose until the thing is in place. You know, sometimes you can just be a little short. I've clamped a board on top 
to act as a guide to cutting the top of the post off at the angle I want. Then here again, using the recycled pressure treated wood, I'm adding the top light. If you're wondering here why sometimes I'm using screws and sometimes I'm using the nails, it's kind of a mixed bag of I'm using screws to have better connections to the main members and when I have a large field of fasteners to do, such as joining the two top lights together, it's just cheaper to be using the nails and it's a little quicker to just uh, zap them in as opposed to using the screwdriver for each fastener. It never hurts to have an extra hammer on the hand. <laughs> 